ABL Cadets, Chapter 021 Military Museum Lieutenant Colonel Knox, Commander Irene, and the 50 students in the military command section waited at the school gate for the large suspension bus. The large suspension bus, which could hold dozens of people, looked like a turntable, a round body with many seats, because of its size. It must drive at the bottom of the air suspension lane. And its speed was much slower than a regular suspension vehicle that could load five or six people. But there were some advantages to being bulky and slow. The ride was very smooth. The large suspension bus would run very smoothly and standing in the bus was just like standing on the ground. Even running and dancing wouldn't affect the body's balance. The 50 people sat in accordance with their student number. Lin Yuan and Caesar's school numbers were next to each other, so they sat together. Instructor Irene smiled and said, It'll take two hours to get to the museum. Do you want to play some games? Although they were already soldiers, after all, they were all 18-year-old children. There was no need to make everyone keep serious military discipline. As soon as Irene said this, Student Baker immediately raised his hand and suggested, Instructor, there are 50 students. If everyone performed something, we'll be finished in two hours. We can have singing, dancing, anything. Ah, making everyone do something was indeed very fair. Irene thought about it and said, Okay, then everyone perform. Something, introduce yourself. We can all get familiar with each other. Then she looked at Lin Yuan, Lin Yuan, since you're the squad leader, you start first. Since he was called out by the teacher, Lin Yuan had to stand up. He went to the middle of the open space, smiled and said, I can't sing and dance. How about I show you some somersaults? Everyone was surprised a moment. They didn't know how he would perform somersaults. Some people even thought, somersaults, isn't that what three? Your old children do for fun, somersaults, ah, squad leader. What are you thinking? Irene was very interested. It doesn't matter. You can show us anything. Lin Yu smiled and scratched his head. Then he stretched out his hands into the standard position and began flipping. One, two, three, ten, thirty, fifty, eighty. Everyone's eyes glazed over as they gaped and looked at the squad leader rapidly flipping over and over and over again. Is he an acrobat? Doesn't he feel dizzy? Turning so much, everyone felt dizzy just looking. After Lin Yuan did 100 consecutive flips, he finally stopped. But everyone's eyes were already at at. Lin Yuan smiled and bowed to everyone. Then he calmly walked back and sat next to Caesar, the bus was silent for five seconds, then a cheer suddenly sounded, Awesome, squad leader, you're too cool, Baker shouted excitedly, with student Baker in the lead. Deafening cheers suddenly sounded in the bus, almost shaking the roof with applause, many. People looked toward Lin Yuan with admiring eyes. Lin Yuan smiled at everyone, embarrassed. When the applause finally stopped, Irene said, Caesar's up next, we'll move according to seat order. Caesar walked to the middle of the suspension bus and asked, Can I put on some music? Irene nodded, Of course you can. Caesar opened his mini light tablet and played a song. Rhythmic heavy metal music sounded. Caesar stretched out his arms and began to dance before everyone's shocked eyes. Caesar's dance was very entertaining. His muscles and bones were under his control. His hands and feet moved freely. Every part of his body swung precisely. He danced in perfect rhythmic fusion with the music, explosive dancing, causing everyone to stare in. Shock, this is an alpha's momentum. Caesar's dance was not only very powerful, you couldn't look away from it, like you were watching a professional level dancer. He actually incorporated a lot of fighting art into the fluid dance. Every action was smooth, simple, and accurate like a performance that was planned in advance. When the music finally stopped, Caesar took a bow and swung out an arm in invitation, like inviting a dance partner. This simple action gave the performance a gentlemanly mood. The bus exploded in screams and applause. Caesar smiled and bowed to everyone, then turned back to his seat. Lin Yuan applauded while watching Caesar and asked, Do you dance as a hobby? Ah. 
You danced really well, really, because Lin Yuan. Happily praised him, Caesar couldn't help but also smile. Have you finally noticed my good points? Since you praised me, I'll also boast you. Caesar looked back at Lin Yuan and leaned to his ear to whisper, Your somersaults were pretty. Cool. Your body is so flexible. Did you learn acrobatics? Lin Yuan smiled and said, No, I was too naughty when I was a child. I like to do somersaults on my bed for really long times. Caesar. At that moment, Caesar really wanted to rub Lin. Yuan's head. He thought of a small Lin Yuan excitedly flipping and rolling around on his bed. That must have been super cute, right? I wonder if his family recorded him or have childhood pictures. I really want to see what he looked like as a kid. Caesar looked back at Lin Yuan, but Lin Yuan was looking intently at the next performer, unfortunately in accordance with the seat order. The next performer happened to be Carl from the neighboring dormitory. Carl was singing. His smiling face and demeanor making him fit in with any of the popular celebrities. Moreover, Carl's voice was very soft, and he was singing a recently popular love song. His gentle voice slipped into the air. Like a lover's whisper, although he didn't like Carl, he had to admit that his singing was quite pleasant. But seeing Lin Yuan's earnestly intoxicated expression as he listened to Carl's singing, Caesar couldn't help but feel somewhat annoyed next time. He had to find a chance to sing in front of Lin Yuan. Actually, he couldn't just dance. His singing ability was not inferior to Carl's. Caesar silently thought this in his heart. The performances continued. It turned out that the class had a lot of talented people. Some people could mimic animals. Some people said tongue twisters, and Bosa even performed an old school ballet. After the talent show, the distance between the students seemed to close in. And squad leader Lin Yuan even got to clearly record the names of all the class members and memorize their faces, asterisk, 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 at 10 o'clock in the morning. The suspension bus finally arrived at the military museum. The museum was the largest military museum in the empire. It was built in the middle of the endless plains and was divided into several buildings. The tallest one was thousands of meters high, and you couldn't see the top if you looked up. The huge complex covered more than 10,000 square meters, and a large number of military equipment were on display. The group of students excitedly ran out from the suspension bus and met the museum staff standing in a row by the door. A young man stepped forward and shook hands with Colonel Knox and Commander Irene. Then said to the students, "Students, welcome to the military museum. You'll be the first group to visit. Your class will be divided into five groups, and the tour guides will take you to visit different exhibition areas. Please don't make noise in the museum. Photography equipment is not allowed either. If there are any questions, you can raise your hands and ask." Okay, the crowd immediately nodded. The fifty people automatically divided into five groups according to school number and followed the five tour guides. Knox and Irene were invited to the curator's office. They have visited the museum countless times. They didn't need to see it again. The museum's tour guides were specifically trained to lead students. They didn't need to worry about them. Lin Yuan, Caesar, Carl, and Baker were in the fifth. Group. They followed a female tour guide to the 50th floor of a district. The tour guide took everyone into the exhibition hall. An ancient spacecraft was displayed in the open hall. It was 10 times smaller than today's spaceships, and because of its age, some parts of the spacecraft had begun to fade. The tour guide smiled and said, "Students, you are now looking at the Pearl No. 01 spacecraft. This spacecraft has a special significance." Who knows it? The tour guide looked in Lin Yuan's direction. Lin Yuan replied, "This is the first interplanetary passenger ship in the history of mankind. The first batch of people who left Earth used this pearl no. A one." The tour guide continued to question, "Why is it called the pearl?" Lin Yuan replied, "Because pearls have always been used as a lucky stone for wedding anniversaries. It symbolizes health, purity, and happiness." When the ship was made by the spacecraft engineers, 
The hope was that after leaving Earth, humanity would still be able to live healthy and happy lives. So it was named the Pearl afterwards. All the interstellar passenger spaceships followed the tradition. The female tour guide smiled and nodded. This answer is very good. Your historical knowledge foundation is obviously very solid. Lin Yuan also smiled back at her. Student Baker proudly said, Ms. Tour Guide, he is our squad leader. The tour guide said, oh, no wonder. Your squad leader is very powerful, ah? Uh? Everyone immediately nodded and echoed. Yeah, he is, Lin Yuan. He looked back at Caesar and found that Caesar was also smiling at him. Lin Yuan scratched his head and turned away from his line of sight. The woman looked closely at Lin Yuan and her heart couldn't help but doubt. Ah, uh, military command class made a beta the squad leader and all the alpha in this group seemed to have no objection to this. The Alpha who is standing by him is even looking at him with eyes full of admiration. The tour guide took the 10 people to each layer, the first set of covert reconnaissance ships, the first intelligent armor, the first military aircraft carrier, various models of warships. The museum showcased hundreds of years of the Empire's military history since establishment, causing everyone to be dazzled. It was a feast for the eyes especially the 80th floor, the intelligent machine armor area. They looked at the display of machine armors through the huge glass pane. Looking left and right in excitement, many of the armors had long histories, and some of them had even accompanied master mech pilots in tough situations. They were war heroes. The only regret was that most of the mech in the museum were B-class. There was only one A-class, and it was only displayed as an Exhibit because it was seriously damaged beyond repair. Lin Yuan looked at the giant. More than 30 meters high a class mech and couldn't help but exclaim in his heart, a class is really on another leave. L, it's super awe-inspiring. The group of people walked around a district's 80th floor in excitement. It was already noon. The tour guide smiled and said, Okay, we're done with the top floor. I'll give you 10 minutes to take care of any personal business. In 10 minutes, we'll go back down to the first floor to join everyone for lunch. Then in the afternoon, we'll tour the floors below 50. Everyone immediately dispersed. Some people went to the self-help sales robots to buy water. Some left to find a bathroom. Lin Yuan stood in place. Reluctant to leave the mechs behind the window pane, he couldn't help but think, it'd be awesome if I had one. Unfortunately, I can't afford it. But if I have a successful graduation and good results in three years, then I can be a lieutenant of a small corps and get a mech of my own. Lin Yuan was looking forward to a better future when he suddenly heard a strange sound coming from above him. The surrounding students were gone. The space should be quiet but it sounded like a chain was being dragged on the ground. The harsh sound made Lin Yuan scalp them. Isn't this the top floor of the museum? Why is there such a strange sound overhead? Lin Yuan walked to the entrance of the elevator, puzzled. Sure enough, the highest number the elevator could reach was the 80th floor. His current floor, if the 80th floor is the highest level, why is there still a sound overhead? Is there an upstairs? Lin Yuan turned the corner and found an exit. Although most of the buildings now used electric lifts, they still retain traditional staircases in case of fires or power outages that could trap people inside. Lin Yuan pushed the door to go inside, but found that dot that the door was locked. Why is the door locked? Shouldn't it be open in case of emergency? This made Lin Yuan even more puzzled. He looked through the glass on the door and saw stairs leading down and a staircase leading up. The upstairs door was closed tightly. And without hearing the strange burst of sound, most people would think it was the rooftop. Why is the door of the emergency exit locked? Lin Yuan scratched his head, puzzled. Just as he turned away, he suddenly heard a crisp snap sound above him. Like a chain link being shattered. Then there was a shuffling sound. It was very strange as if some trapped beast was struggling desperately. What's going on? What's on the roof? Are there people working up there? Lin Yuan listened to the strange sound. 
his heart rate was inexplicably speeding. Up, he had a very strange intuition. Or was it a subtle irritation? Dot dot whatever was upstairs was very familiar. It was as if some power was attracting him. The gravitational force was so strong that Lin Yuan's body unconsciously moved towards the door. Lin Yuan leaned forward for a closer look and found that the right side of the door had a rectangular magnetic card reader. All kinds of buildings had these types of card identification areas nowadays in their dormitory. Their identity card could be used as a key in higher security places. There was fingerprint or pupil scanners. Lin Yuan took out his military school card and brushed it, but there was no response. After thinking for a while, he took out the platinum crystal card his mother had given him and gently swiped it. The shocking scene happened with the platinum card over the sensor. The door actually opened. Lin Yuan was surprised. Then he excitedly climbed up the stairs. He stood at the second door and once again swiped his crystal card. The heavy metal door slowly opened and Lin Yuan walked into the room. A glare of light reflected through a huge floor window, causing Lin Yuan to reflexively cover his eyes. At this time, the door behind him suddenly closed. The door probably closes automatically. Lin Yuan looked back at the door curiously. Then he turned to look around the room. In a football field-sized space, a giant 50-meter-high mech proudly stood. The armor's body was fiery red, and the metal looked dazzling under the shining sun. Although the mech was huge, its body was structured very smoothly. Every joint was perfectly designed. Its red body shone in the sunlight. It looked like the armor was bathing in fire. It was the most beautiful mech. Lin Yuan had ever seen more beautiful than all the armor he'd seen in the network galleries. The most extreme feature was the crisscrossed electromagnetic chains covering the armor. The moment Lin Yuan had walked through the door, the armor suddenly shook fiercely, and the chains covering its body split and completely broke. Lin Yuan froze in astonishment and stared up at it with wide eyes. The armor seemed to also be stunned for a moment. Then it slightly bowed its head. It's red. Eyes flashing as it looked at the small human it could effortless trample to death with one foot. It was silent for a long time before asking, pardon my rudeness, can you help me with a favor? Lin Yuan stared and pointed to his nose. You, you, you're talking to me. The armor nodded and softly said, yes. Do you want to drive an S-Class mech? Come here, come to me. I'll teach you how to drive. He said this and popped open the cockpit in his chest. Then he bent down to bring the cockpit to Lin Yuan. What the hell is going on? Not only can the mech speak directly, it can also take the initiative to invite someone to drive it. Is there such a sentient mech? Although his heart was very puzzled, this was the first time Lin Yuan had seen the S-Class mech, yet he seemed to have a strange attraction to it. He excitedly jumped into Suzaku's cockpit and asked, You're really S-Class. Are you 50 meters tall? Oh, right. What's your name? The armor didn't answer him. It just straightened himself up and closed the cockpit door. The moment the cockpit door closed, Lin Yuan saw the door of the room open and Caesar rush in. Lin Yuan, the familiar voice, entered his ear. But before Lin Yuan could respond, his body was tightly wrapped by redner fibers. At the same time, Suzaku suddenly started his engine and soared up, directly crashing through the museum's roof. Bright red wings burst out from its shoulders. And the fire red armor looked like a phoenix. With shocking speed, it quickly flew up to an altitude of 90,000 meters. Equals, 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 T N. The Chinese seem to have an obsession with heavy metal music. Maybe the genre is different over there, cause it's not really something that's danced to over here. And less head banging and jumping like a lunatic is dancing. <laughs> ABL Cadets, Chapter 02, Smart Armor Suzaku. What's going on? He went to the bathroom, then came back to find that Lin Yuan had suddenly disappeared. Caesar looked round anxiously. 
saw an open corridor door and immediately rushed in just in time. To see another door shut behind Lin Yuan, he walked to the door and found that the door had automatically locked, and it was set to the most advanced access permission. Caesar took out his identity card and brushed it at the sensor. The door opened, and he saw a shocking scene. Lin Yuan jumped into a large max cockpit, and the red armor directly jumped into the sky, fleeing the museum. Caesar almost shocked. Lin Yuan, Caesar shouted. But there was no response. Damn, why did that fool jump? Straight into the cockpit, that huge red mech was clearly an S-Class, the highest level intelligent mech. Their intelligence is not inferior to mankind. The Empire only had 10 S-Class mech. And due to confidentiality, average people didn't understand the true intelligence of S-Class mech. They only knew that they were very powerful, but they didn't know just how powerful S-Class mech were controlled with the mind. They needed to have a master that matches their spirit. Someone who doesn't own the machine must not drive it. If the driver's mental threshold was not high enough or the driver was not recognized by the mech, they were likely to be counter-controlled by the powerful armor or even deemed an enemy and destroyed Lin. Yuan doesn't drive an S-Class armor. He doesn't even understand the principle of handling an S-Class mech. He'll get in an accident. Caesar had never been so anxious in his life. The moment Suzaku took off, he didn't hesitate to press the space. Button on his wrist, white feather, fast catch up. Yes, master. Hearing the master's call, white feather immediately changed his body, pushed Caesar directly into his chest's cockpit, jumped and launched his wings, pure white wings like the wings. Of a large bird, giant mech wings immediately sped upwards at a speed similar to Suzaku. Asterisk, 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 Suzaku's cockpit. Lin Yuan, who was wrapped by the nerve fibers, was undergoing the matching process with Suzaku's intelligence center 0%, 1%, 2%. The matching process percentage was consistently climbing upwards on the screen. At the moment, Lin Yuan's mind seemed to be replaying memories in strange movie-like fragments. His brain felt like it was about to explode. He felt like thousands of insects were tearing at his nerves. In the man-machine spirit matching process, he was forced to view Suzaku's memories, more than a decade of following his former owner on the battlefield. Being drenched in the enemy's blood, the excitement, more. Then 10 years of imprisonment in the museum's top secret room, he couldn't escape the lonely and painful memories, the joy of victory, the sadness when master left. The reluctance of imprisonment, many years of repressed memories poured directly into the 18-year-old's mind, Lin Yuan's spirit was about to collapse. Asterisk, 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 hello, my name is Lin Yu. Our spirit match was successful, so I'll be your master. What would you like as a name? Something to match your redness. Dot dot is Suzaku good? I don't like it. Oh, well, I'll make you like it. Suzaku, I'm an Omega. That day you did the genetic testing. You already knew, right? What are you going to do? Oh, well. I've been using inhibitors for so many years. No harm in continuing. But it's dangerous. In what way? I was born an Omega. If I didn't do this, I would have been forced to match with a stranger and have children at 18. That's the rules of life's game. That's the real danger. Master, your body's omega pheromone has reached its peak. You have to. Don't say it. Immediately adjust the sailing route. Let the night cores go directly to the Isuville Cosmic Wormhole. Master, I'm sorry, Suzaku. I can't take you with me. The plot of the former owner and armor poured in. From the moment of that first encounter to the day of parting, the scenes flashed in front of his eyes, causing Lin Yuan's mind to whirl in chaos. He clenched his fists, his brain overflowing with memory scenes over and over again, assaulting him with shockingly terrible pain, causing Lin Yuan to curl up and bite his lips until it bleed. Son, what do you want to be named? How about little Yuan? Don't cry, don't cry. You like the name. Right, it's okay. I'll make you like it. There was a gentle voice whispering in his ear. Son, you'll grow up to be a beta, a healthy and happy beta. 
Okay, little Yuan, your daddy will give you something delicious. It's called cake. Come. Say it with daddy. See a cake. Silly goose, it's cake nod. Kale, little Yuan, you stole the ice cream again, right? So naughty. And it's all day. You look like Porky Pig. Little Yuan, sorry, daddy has to go. He can't take you with him. Be obedient, okay? No matter what difficulties you face, you must stay. Strong to live, Dad. He heard a hoarse, tender voice shouting, Dad, don't leave me, Daddy. The man never looked back. The weather on that planet was freezing cold. Then, the child's arm was injected with a cold liquid. He lost consciousness and lost his memories. He didn't remember that man's appearance, didn't remember anything before the age of four, didn't even remember his name, Lin Yuan's eyes reddened. He began to struggle desperately. His memories were in disorder. He wasn't clear if the memory was from the Mac or himself, but the memory of the man's voice made him want to cry. Dad, is that my dad? This kind of forced recall, with complete remembrance of little details, was too painful. His heart was battered with waves of pain like a rope was tied around it and pulling tightly. 5%, 20%, 80%. 100%. The matching process percentage on the screen suddenly soared to 100% within 5 seconds. Lin Yuan's spirit immediately began to control Suzaku. Suzaku was shocked. This was just an 18-year-old child. He'd only led him into the cockpit to control him and get enough spiritual power and energy to escape. He had been shut off for too long. His spiritual power was declining, even his secretly hidden energy resource was running out. If he wanted to escape, he had to rely on a human's power. He didn't expect that the young man's spirit was so tenacious. He not only couldn't control it smoothly, the boy even counter-controlled his intelligence center. Suzaku tried to suppress Lin Yuan, but Lin Yuan's will resolutely struggled against him. Both sides were in a stalemate causing Suzaku's intelligence center and Lin Yuan's spirit to suddenly jumble in. Chaos, son, be a beta, father, live strongly. What are these memories? Why does this child's memory have a very familiar figure? General Lin Yu, asterisk, 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 not far behind, Caesar was frowning deeply. The red armor was suddenly flying and steadily. It even launched a series of particles guns, White Feather was unprepared for an attack. He flew up and down in clumsy dodges and instinctively tried to counterattack. Caesar immediately ordered, Don't fire back. Lin Yuan is in there. Don't hurt him. White Feather was silent for a moment. Then it began shouting back defiantly, Master, that's Suzaku. Don't attack so it doesn't get hurt, but also follow it closely and capture it. This is too difficult, Master. He's an S-class, like me, Caesar. Of course, knew this. White Feather and Suzaku were at the same level. They normally would not dare to attack each other, even if they went all out in a real fight. It would lead to a tie. White Feather was annoyed. This sucks. Ancestor Suzaku is my idol. Master, I really don't want to chase it. Ah, Caesar frowned. Try to connect to the other cockpit. I want to see Lin Yuan's situation. Unable to connect. What? The driver on the other side didn't respond. Suzaku's intelligence center. Seems to be in a... Oh, oh no. Another group of light energy shots fired over, and White Feather moved to avoid the danger. White Feather said gloomily, not again. We'll be blown to pieces at this rate. Its intelligence center is messed up. It's out of control, master. Do something. Caesar was silent for a moment. Then he calmly said, forcibly invade Suzaku's intelligence center. White Feather didn't respond. He silently began to invade the other's intelligence center. Ah. Powerful electromagnetic interference abruptly enveloped Suzaku. Suzaku was already in a state of chaos because of Lin Yuan's spirit confrontation. So White Feather's invasion easily succeeded. The situation in Suzaku's cockpit immediately appeared. On Caesar's screen, Caesar saw Lin Yuan under Suzaku's control in its cockpit. He was tightly wrapped like a dumpling by red nerve fibers. Lin Yuan was curled up, twitching painfully, occasionally breaking out in intense struggles. His sweat had 
already soaked his clothes. His eyes were red, and his lips had been bitten bloody. Dad, Lin Yuan faintly cried, his pale lips slightly trembling, Daddy. Don't leave me, Caesar's heart suddenly tightened, like a hand had forcefully grabbed it. An acute heartache instantly spread over his body. The always calm Caesar was furious. Suzaku, stop it. You're going to break Lin Yuan's spirit. Stop. Almost all S-Class mech underwent matching with the driver's spirit when they were freshly manufactured, empty of memories. After a successful match, they would be loyal to their master. Suzaku had 10 years of memories with Ling Yu, plus he was in prison for 10 more years. His intelligence center had too much messy memories. Now that he was forcibly matching with Lin Yuan, the two sides were fighting with each other, trying to subdue the other. The consequences of repressing each other was a mental breakdown. Caesar stared intently at the huge, far-red, bird-like S-class mech. Suzaku, desperately wanting to tear it to pieces, that idiot Lin Yuan had never driven an S-class mech. He didn't know how powerful an S-class armor was. Watching Suzaku trying to control Lin Yuan's spirit, giving him memory disorders, and making him Tremble in pain, Caesar was crazy with anguish. Suzaku, land now, Caesar's cold voice sounded in the other's cockpit, but Suzaku apparently couldn't process his words. It still stubbornly flew forward with the fastest speed, its huge red wings, beating, shimmering brilliantly under the sunlight. White Feather suddenly shouted, Master, Master, we're quickly approaching the Barilla Grand Canyon, and Suzaku is running out of energy. Its energy levels is only 2%, 1%. Ah, it's going. Down, the energy exhausted Suzaku suddenly began rapidly falling. Below it was the Barilla Grand Canyon. Its depth reached thousands of meters, if they couldn't catch it in time. Such a drop would definitely destroy it. Dot dot double quotes Caesar's heartbeat. Almost stopped, then he immediately used his spiritual power to directly control White Feather. At that moment, Caesar and White Feather's spiritual integration directly jumped to 300%. The highest man-machine combination, at this moment, as long as Caesar thought it, regardless of the order, White Feather would immediately react like it was his real body. The huge pure white mech suddenly spread its wings as far as it could stretch. Then it accelerated downwards, moving towards Suzaku's falling. Path swooping down, Suzaku had almost reached the bottom of the canyon. It had already given up hope because of its confrontation with the young man's spirit. Its intelligence center was in chaos, and it accidentally fired off its particle guns. Exhausting its already low energy, it couldn't even change its size. It could only let itself drop. That poor child in the cockpit, he's so young, his memories have the general's figure. Is he the general's child? Suzaku thought in sadness. If it really crashed, it could only use the scrape of energy it still had left to eject an escape pod, hoping to save the child. 3,000 meters, 500 meters, 10 meters. It was falling at a fast speed. Suzaku immediately braced itself for an impact. With the rocks at the bottom, at that moment, he was suddenly covered by a huge shadow. That shadow shrouded his whole body and lifted him up. White Feather's arms suddenly stretched down and accurate. Eli grasped Suzaku's shoulder. Then it did end. Ariel jumped and immediately lifted Suzaku upwards. They narrowly avoided the dangerous rocks at the bottom of the canyon, like dodging a waterfall of rocks. Then they directly flew out of the Barilla Grand Canyon with the fastest speed, Caesar's. Forehead was dripping with cold sweat. Dot dot double quotes White Feather also felt lingering fear. Ah ah, master, your math must be very good. We save it by just 10 meters, 10 meters. You scared the crap out of me. Caesar finally felt slightly relieved. His palm was slippery with sweat. He had been even more frightened than White Feather. His heart had almost stopped. If he had been 10 meters short, Suzaku's head would have stuck the ground. The faster a mech was moving, the faster their fall. He was a good distance away from Suzaku, even though they're the same level. It would not be easy to catch up, seeing Suzaku falling from such a high place, if he couldn't save it. 
and Suzaku and Linyuan crashed into the Grand Canyon, and the machine was destroyed. He didn't even dare think about the consequences. At that time, Caesar and White Feather integrated and dived at the fastest speed. After a long silence, White Feather regained his balance and flew steadily at a high altitude while clutching Suzaku. If you looked up from the ground, it would look like one red and one white bird were flying gracefully. Oh, does this mean I rescued Ancestor Suzaku? White Feather asked. Then he shamelessly moved his arms to cling to Suzaku's waist and cheerfully said, Master, I think this hold is more stable. What do you think, Caesar? This machine had definitely stayed with Brian for too long. It had absorbed all of Brian's shamelessness. White Feather continued excitedly, I saved Ancestor Suzaku, I saved Ancestor Suzaku. I can't wait to tell the other armors about this. They'll be so jealous. Caesar calmly said, If you don't want to be executed by the Mech Association, you better not mention this to anyone. Oh, White Feather closed his mouth, aggrieved, find a vacant land to put Suzaku down. I want to see Lin Yuan's situation. White Feather silently looked for a wide prairie and slowly landed. Steadily resting Suzaku on the ground, Suzaku's cockpit immediately popped open and Caesar quickly jumped in to find Yuan. Lin Yuan's spirit was strongly fluctuating. He was barely conscious. But when he became aware of a familiar warm atmosphere, he instinctively stretched out his arms and directly rushed into the boy's arms in front of him. Dot dot double quotes Caesar's body stiffened. Then he immediately reached out to catch Lin Yuan. The boy's flexible body leaned on him, shivering in his arms. He brought up his arms to hug his neck and softly whispered, Dad, Caesar, Lin Yuan was clearly recalling bad childhood memories. The always optimistic boy actually revealed such a sad expression. Looking at his pale face, Caesar's heart softened. He tightened his arms and held Lin Yuan up. Then he walked back to White Feather's cockpit while gently whispering in the boy's ear, I'm here. Don't be afraid. It'll be okay. Master, master, you said outsiders can't come into the cockpit. Perceiving a stranger's breath in his body, White Feather immediately resisted. This is my cockpit. You can't just walk in with outsiders. He's not an outsider. Then Kaser lightly added, Oh, right. I order you to mute. If you talk any more nonsense, I'll have Brian drop you down to C-Class. White Feather obediently muted. Without the annoying background noise, Caesar brought Lin Yuan into the spacious cockpit bedroom. Lin Yuan was clinging tightly to his neck. His head buried in his chest, his pale lips and his body was still. Trembling, the boy was in a coma, defenselessly lying on his chest, causing Caesar to feel distressed. He immediately tightly hugged him back. Equals 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 T N cake not kale. It actually said cake dangal not eggs Dan. The armors are referred to as both it and he, so it might get confusing at times. <laughs> ABL Cadets, Chapter 0-3 Tempted only major military generals and prominent leaders in the royal family were eligible to own S-Class mechs, so their interior design was naturally very luxurious. White Feather's full body expansion was more than 100. Meters wide, its cockpit was very spacious, and in addition to the driving platform, there was an independent bedroom for the owner. The size and specifications of the bedroom was even better than a first-class hotel suite. However, the bedroom within Caesar's armor was not so extravagant. He valued comfort and practicality above all, so the bedroom space was fully utilized and decorated in a very simple and clean way. The spacious bed had a soft white mattress. Caesar gently rested Lin Yuan on the bed, but Lin Yuan seemed to be stuck in a fearful memory. He immediately clung tightly to Caesar's neck, repeatedly calling out for his father. Caesar was stunned for a moment. Lin Yuan 
was probably mistaking him for his father in his memory, so he was holding him tightly. Cough, although he was very tangled from being identified as a father, Lin Yuan was tightly holding him, so Caesar felt distressed and soft-hearted. Seeing Lin Yuan's pale complexion, his heart felt sore, so Caesar immediately ignored being awkwardly called dad and gently embraced Lin Yuan. Don't be afraid. It's all right. Like appeasing a frightened animal. Caesar stretched out his slender fingers and stroked Lin Yuan's back. He seemed to feel a warm presence, so Lin Yuan buried his face deeper into Caesar's bosom, his body still slightly trembling, his forehead was constantly oozing sweat, but his arms stubbornly gripped Caesar. Caesar couldn't help but tighten his arms, one arm wrapped around the boy's waist, the other hand patiently and gently rubbing his back, as well as petting his hair, trying to appease him. I'm here. I won't leave you, okay? Don't be sad. Caesar's voice was gentle as water, as if he was coaxing a lover, white feather. This is too nauseating, master. This is a high-tech society, master. When you encounter this situation, you only need to give him a tiny dose of tranquilizers. You really don't need to use hands-on manual. Repetitive means to pacify him. Ah, uh, unfortunately, White Feather was ordered to be quiet, so he dared not speak out. He only looked at the two embracing in the bedroom with a puzzled curiosity. He's not an outsider, is he? A so-called wife? Thinking of this, White Feather immediately forgot the mute command in his excitement. He projected a small virtual White Feather and floated into the bedroom, master. You just said he's not an outsider, right? I understand. He must be your fancied. Prince Princess. Prince Princess is really good looking. Ah, beautiful eyes, cute nose. Hair is my favorite pure black. Caesar looked at him impatiently. Shut up. Don't wake him up. Lin Yuan had finally calmed down and fallen asleep when this chatty white feather ran over. Caesar really regretted lending it to Brian so he could study the manufacturing principles of S-Class Mech. White Feather stayed with Brian for half a month and came back like this. The melodramatic romance dramas Brian loved watching produced mental toxins that completely polluted White Feather, I know, at his master's fierce glare. White Feather immediately put away his voice and directly communicated with Caesar by spirit. Connection, master, are you sure you want to choose him as prince princess? He seems to be a beta ah. The royal family must combine with Omega to keep the royal family bloodline pure. Did you really fall in love with a beta? You're so courageous ah, Caesar. White feather floated. Curiously in the air. Are you going to give up being heir to the Cepheus throne and elope with him, Caesar? White feather excitedly said. I know, you must have a good plan. You'll take him to a beautiful secluded place and live happily in a world for two, right? I understand. This is the true love of humanity, rest assured. I'll take up with you two fugitives and flee to the end of the universe. Protecting you from the bounty hunters his majesty will send to capture you, I'll definitely support you and always accompany you and dutifully take good care of you and watch your children grow up, Caesar glanced at it coldly, then pressed the manual shutdown button. White Feather, while being forced to close down his intelligence center, White Feather couldn't help but think, sure enough, the guy who speaks the truth is always punished. After speaking the master's thoughts, I was shut down. The master must be shy. At the moment, Caesar was thinking, Brian. Definitely made that Mac watch a bunch of his melodramatic love dramas with him. Just what the heck is going on in White Feather's intelligence center? Does he have a collection of every kind of contrived romantic film plot? He really felt ashamed. To be his master, luckily Lin Yuan was still asleep, so he didn't hear that nonsense. He looked back to his arms and found that Lin Yuan's expression was very uneasy. He was frowning tightly. Apparently caught in a terrible nightmare, Caesar took off his coat and shoes, laid him on the bed, smoothed out his messy hair and tucked him in with the quilt. He searched around in the bedroom for the healing instrument and took it over to check Lin Yuan's vitals. He found no big problems with his 
body, but the curve on the eek had abnormal fluctuations. Obviously, his mental state was very poor. It must be because he was forced to accept memories from Suzaku, leading to his memory disorder. Caesar took a sedative, lifted Lin Yuan's hand, and injected the medicine into his vein. Lin Yuan gradually quieted down with the sedative, and his brain's mental fluctuations slowly became stable. Ten seconds later, he entered into a deep and peaceful sleep. The various values on the healing instrument also returned to normal. Caesar finally relaxed. Fortunately, Lin Yuan's spirit was strong enough. He'd managed to force himself to handle his memory disorders. If that wasn't the case, Lin Yuan would have had a mental breakdown and become a madman. That kind of mental torment was many times more terrible than fleshly torture. Thinking of this, Caesar's heart suddenly clamped in pain. He looked at the pale boy lying on the bed, and his heart suddenly produced a strong desire to protect him, to never let him be hurt. When an alpha faces their loved ones, the first feelings produced is this strong desire to protect. Then it's the desire to conquer and the desire to monopolize. When an alpha's pheromones suddenly begin to fluctuate violently, it's a sign that the alpha has fallen in love. Caesar immediately dropped Lin Yuan's hand and stiffly turned away from the cockpit. Caesar walked out of the cockpit, temporarily depressed from his chaotic thoughts. And saw Suzaku, where White Feather had dropped him on the ground. Although White Feather was headache-inducingly chatty, as an S-class intelligent mech, he still had a sense of propriety when working. It chose to land in a desolate, undeveloped prairie with no monitoring systems nearby, so they didn't have to worry about being tracked. Caesar walked to Suzaku's front, frowning, and asked, "Tell me, Suzaku, why did you escape today?" Suzaku remained silent. Apparently, he was not at ease with the person in front of him. Caesar paused, then took out his platinum card for Suzaku to look at, and softly said, "You should be able to guess my identity, right? The mech I'm driving today is called White Feather. It was made by Mr. Aston, the same as you. Your manufacturing process is similar, so it could easily invade your intelligence center." Suzaku was silent for a while. Then he finally asked, "You're the fourth prince." Caesar nodded, then slowly said, "Suzaku, I have no malicious intentions. Your energy is exhausted. You can't escape, and the museum people are chasing you. If you don't want to be caught and brought back to the museum, it's best to tell me what's going on. Maybe I can think of a way to help you." Suzaku's red eyes flashed for a moment. Then he said. I don't want to be kept there like a prisoner. I've been waiting for a chance to escape all these years, but when they imprisoned me, they unloaded all the energy stores in my body. A machine cannot move without energy. Fortunately, when Mr. Aston made me, he installed a light conversion system, so I can store and use solar energy. Only Mr. Aston and my master knew about it. These years, I've been taking advantage of the minutes during their daily inspections too. Accumulate light energy, so I could save enough energy for when I found a chance to escape. Suzaku paused. I don't know how Master is doing. I'd love to find him. Caesar asked, puzzled. Master, you mean General Ling Yu? Suzuki said. Yes. You know him? Caesar was silent about General Ling Yu. He only knew that he was the Night Corps general who had injected illegal Omega inhibitors, and after being expelled from military. He was sentenced to lifelong house arrest, but somehow he stole an armor and escaped Cepheus. Then he encountered a cosmic sandstorm and was buried in the interstellar ruins. This matter was over 19 years old. The military dissolved the Night Corps and blocked all the news about the matter. And over the years, no one ever mentioned the name Ling Yu. Caesar only knew this much because he'd visited Marshal Rosen's house when he was a child and had inadvertently found Ling Yu's tomb in the back garden. T. He monument was engraved with the Imperial Knight Corps Tomb of General Ling Yu. Caesar was very puzzled. Why did they stand a tombstone at a house instead of the cemetery the Empire dedicates for burying martyrs? After returning to the palace, the puzzled Caesar pestered his mother about this. 
matter, the frustrated Queen Anna whispered the reason to him and warned him not to mention it to anyone. Caesar learned the cause and effect and couldn't help but feel sorry for that very talented general in you, child Caesar even felt. That the military court people were too unreasonable. They actually expulsed General Lingyu out of the army because he was an Omega. Of course, he was only 10 years old, and a prince must be cautious. So he could only secretly say these thoughts in his heart. The experience of General Lingyu had very much touched Caesar's heart. Unexpectedly, today he actually got a chance to witness the legendary exclusive armor of General Lingyu, Suzaku. Caesar was silent for a moment, then he said, You want to find your master, don't you know he's dead? Suzaku froze, he died, Caesar nodded. He was sentenced to lifelong house arrest by the military court. But he later took an armor and escaped Cepheus, encountered a cosmic sandstorm, and was buried in the interstellar ruins. It's been 19 years, 19 years. He was imprisoned for so long. Suzaku was silent for a moment, he looked as sad as a robot could look. His head lowered, although the armors were a mixture of metal. Their intelligence center was quite advanced, especially the S-Class armors. Their intelligence center was modeled almost exactly after a human's nervous system. When a master and armor stayed together for a long time, it was very normal for both of them to grow emotionally attached Suzaku suddenly learned the news of his master's death. It should be very sad, right? Caesar didn't know how to comfort it, so he stayed silent. But at the moment, Suzaku was thinking about another matter. According to his time estimates, he was separated from his master after his arrest. If he really was dead as the man in front of him said, then what about the child today? Why does that child's memory have General Ling Yu's figure? Hidden in the depths of that child's memories is a picture of General Lingyu calling him son. In other words, Master is most likely not dead, and he even gave birth to that child, as to where his master went. And why the boy came here, these mysteries could only be slowly solved by with him. After a moment, Suzaku softly said, Today, the child that was driving me, he is your classmate, right? I would like to be his armor. I want to recognize him as my master. Do you have a way to help me? Caesar was surprised and asked, You want to recognize Lin Yuan as your master? How much did he match with you? Suzaku said with certainty, 100% and because we had a spiritual collision this time. It affected the match. On the Ray match, it should be more than 100% Caesar. Unlike the Alpha, Beta, and Omega's innate physical differences, the spiritual strength completely varies from person to person. The spiritual threshold was determined by innate genetics and intensive spiritual training. There were many Alpha who were physically stronger, but spiritually weaker than Beta or even genetically superior Omega. Linyuan's spiritual threshold is actually so high, Suzaku. Besides being an S-Class mech, also had nearly three decades of memory. As an S-Class mech, even the experienced with armor-driving combatants who knew the ins and out of machines like the back of their hands would be too afraid to risk driving it. But Lin Yuan was actually able to meet it with a 100% match. Caesar's mood felt complex. Just how many more shocking secrets does Lin Yuan's body hold? Are there any more like dropping an alpha in three seconds? or doing over a hundred consecutive somersaults without dizziness, and making even an S-class mech want to recognize him as master. No wonder someone secretly gave him the nickname Small Beta Monster. Small Monster are really apt words to describe him. Caesar took a deep breath to calm down and looked at Suzaku. Suzaku, you should know already. Who can own an S-class mech is very strictly controlled even if you want to recognize Lin Yuan as master. It has to go through the approval process from the Mech Association and a signature from the Melita. Right, Council, Lin Yuan is only an ordinary cadet. The military won't agree to let a student own an S-Class Mech. Suzaku replied, I know, that's why I want you to help me drop my hardware down to see Caesar was startled. A downgrade, yes. 
Suzaku said, I'm willing to become C-Class, man ordinary. C-Class mech doesn't need to go through the Mech Association and the Military Council review. If I'm dropped down to C-Class and sent to Lin Yuan, no one will be suspicious, Caesar. Armor hardware installations were very strictly hardwired. During the manufacturing process, upgrading the hardware was very troublesome, dismantling the hardware was even more trouble, and the process could very easily cause permanent damage. In most cases, it directly destroyed the mech, no smart mech. Armor would willingly ask to be downgraded, but Suzaku, in order to escape museum pursuit, was actually willing to drop to C-Class. Anyone could see how painful its years of captivity must have been. Disassembly and emotion, although the risk was. Hi, luckily they had brain. The guy who has been handling mechs like they were toys since childhood, they could give it a try. Caesar thought about it, then finally agreed. All right. If you really want to recognize Lin Yuan as your master, I have a way to help you. An S-Class mech couldn't be directly sent to Lin Yuan. So bringing Suzaku down to C-Class, then sending him to Lin Yuan was a good choice. More specifically, Suzaku's intelligence center would remain S-Class, but his weapons and hardware would be temporarily removed. Afterwards, they needed to find a way to install them back. This was equivalent to making an S-Class IQ armor with a C-Class shell. Lin Yuan would be very happy if he had a mech armor with an S-Class. Intelligence Center, he would probably laugh during his sleep right. Thinking of Lin Yuan's black eyes full of joy and excitement, Caesar felt, dot dot his heart warming. He couldn't wait to fulfill all of the boy's wishes. Caesar looked at Suzaku and smiled. It's an agreement. We'll put on a play together. Caesar took out a small mech space button. Come Suzaku. Jump into the space button. I'll take you away from here. Thank you. Suzaku obediently jumped into the space button. Caesar walked back into the bedroom with Suzaku. Lin Yuan was still asleep. Because of the sedative, his sleep was very stable. His long and thick eyelashes casted a faint shadow on his face and his bitten until bloody lips were healed, but very swollen. It looked particularly pity-inducing. Caesar sat on the bed and stretched out his hand to gently rub Lin Yuan's hair. The black hair slipped through his fingers, and its softness seemed to spread to his heart. In the quiet space, there was only the sound of heartbeats and breathing. The frequency of Caesar's heartbeat gradually accelerated while watching the boy's swollen lips. He even felt an impulse to lean down and kiss. Oh shit, white feathers nagging crow's beak seems to have hit. The mark, could it be that? I really am attracted to this small beta monster. Equals 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 t n Prince Princess, White Feather calls Lin Yuan Prince Prank. S, but I could be wrong. It's written as Wang Zifei, Prince Princess. Princess is usually written as Wang Fei. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'll edit it. Fallen in Love could also be in Heat Crow's Beak Fig. Person who has made an inauspicious remark. Arc, 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 arc. ABL Cadets, Chapter 024. Crystal card permission at this time. The museum conference room was in chaos. Suzaku's sudden escape made curator Brutus profusely sweat in anxiousness. He immediately dispatched all the security in the museum and even sent an emergency help signal to the military base. A mighty manhunt army rushed out from the museum, but after hunting for nearly half an hour, they still found nothing. What was Suzaku? It was an S-class mech. An S-Class mech speed was much faster than the average mech and warships by several degrees. Coupled with Suzaku's sudden escape being at lunchtime, the time the museum defenses was the most relaxed since most people were on break. Suzaku would have already fled without a trace by the 
Time they dropped their lunch and pursued him. Tens of thousands of meters of high altitude, close to the speed of light, the red dot almost instantly disappeared before the eyes of the crowd. The tracking forces say that the target is fleeing in. The direction of the Barilla Grand Canyon, full pursuit. The target's trail has vanished. The monitoring data is gone. Brutus sat in his office listening to the various reports on the Army's public channel. His wrinkled brow pulling down. Tighter, at this time, shocking news suddenly passed through the communication channel. We've discovered a smart mech ahead. It's moving in the direction of the museum at full speed. It's... It's white, an S-class. The other side has issued a piece. Signal, everyone was stunned. What's going on? Is there a festival for S-class mech today? The red Suzaku fled, and a white one flew back. Many people have never gotten a chance to see one powerful S-class mech in their life, and today. They actually got to see two consecutively. It was too strange. White feathers circled over the stunned crowd of people, proudly puffing his chest and spreading his wings as he flew around the museum. Then he stopped at a high altitude and followed. Caesar's order to directly connect to the video channel in the director's room, Seeing Caesar appear on the screen, Knox and Irene looked at each other in astonishment. Irene hurried to the curator and whispered in his ear, Curator, this is the fourth prince, his royal highness Caesar. Brutus heard this and immediately turned to put his right hand on his chest, giving Caesar the respectful royal greeting ceremony, Your Highness. There's no need to be so polite, curator. Caesar smiled and said, I came back to tell you about Suzaka's situation. The words made the high-level officers in the room immediately looked at each other in surprise. Caesar's expression was calm as he said, Today, at noon, I was on the 80th floor for the tour when I inadvertently heard crashing sounds on the roof. I doubtfully opened the door and walked up a staircase leading to another door. Just in time to see Suzaku break the electromagnetic chains that imprisoned him and escape the museum, I immediately summoned White Feather and perused him. But unfortunately, Suzaku's speed was too fast. I and White Feather were a step behind him and even our fastest speed couldn't catch up with it. Suzaku flew over the Barilla Grand Canyon, but its energy exhausted and he crashed. Caesar said with regret, I'm really sorry. I didn't save it in time. I could only watch it fall to pieces and be buried among the countless stones at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. White Feather. His Majesty Prince was really talented at lying through his teeth and passionately calling it the truth if he hadn't just frantically saved ancestor Suzaku with his master. He would almost believe Caesar's fabricated regretful story. White Feather couldn't help but give his master a thumbs up in his heart. Brutus was somewhat doubtful of Caesar's explanation, but the other side was the prince. He couldn't be easily questioned. But Lieutenant Colonel Knox looked at Caesar and seriously asked, What about Lin Yuan? The monitoring center in the museum was destroyed by Suzaku. Obviously, Suzaku's escape was premeditated. No one knew what happened at the time. But when they assembled at noon, Caesar was missing, and so was Lin Yuan. Knox believed that this matter was certainly related to Lin Yuan. Caesar frankly said, Lin Yuan heard the movement on the roof with me. We chased him together. Lin Yuan was in White Feather's cockpit. But because it was his first ride in an S-class mech, his body was not accustomed to the pressure. So he got a severe headache. He's resting. Caesar transferred the transmission to the bedroom's camera. Everyone saw the quietly sleeping Lin Yuan. The crowd looked at each other, but stayed silent. Seeing that no one was casting doubt, Caesar smiled and said, This is the case. I don't know why Suzaku escaped, but unfortunately I couldn't stop him. I'm sorry, curator. Brutus' old face suddenly flushed. He didn't expect his royal highness. Prince to not only be humble and courteous, he even apologized to him. Brutus hurriedly said, Your Highness, you're too polite. This is not your fault. Suzaku obviously planned this out for a long time. It wanted to escape and we were the ones that couldn't stop it. 
We didn't think it would actually have a secret energy source in its body. We were too negligent. Suzaku naturally deliberated for a long time. Every day it used its few minutes of light to collect light energy, secretly storing. It, if Linyuan and Caesar hadn't accidentally gotten involved today, it would have really fled, Caesar said. Since it's already happened, then you can only do a good job with the aftermath. No one can predict such an accident, Rudis immediately nodded. Yes, your highness, Caesar turned to Irene. Instructor, Lin Yuan feels very uncomfortable. I want to take him back to school, can I? Irene thought for a moment and said, all right. Take him back, we'll come visit him later when we have a... Chance, Caesar smiled and said, Thank you, instructor. After cutting off the video call, Caesar instructed White Feather to turn towards the direction of the San Romeo Military Academy. In the cockpit, White Feather projected his intelligence, center as a pure White Feather, and floated in a circle around Caesar. Then it stopped on Caesar's shoulder and fawningly rubbed Caesar's face. And fortunately, since it was a virtual feather, when it touched Caesar's face, it directly faced through. His face, it made a strange picture. Caesar ignored it and went into the bedroom to look on Lin Yuan. White Feather couldn't be reconciled. It turned into a virtual Lin Yuan. Jumped in front of Caesar and fawningly hugged him. He also rubbed his face. Against Caesar's face, Caesar, although it was only a phantom, a lifelike Lin Yuan was embracing him. Caesar suddenly stiffened and glared at White Feather as he snapped. Are you tired of living? You think I won't send you in for scrap metal? White Feather, who failed to please his master two times, frustratedly turned into a small White Feather and said in a wrong voice. I just wanted to know how you intend to deal with Ancestor Suzaku, listening to the mechs. Wrong voice. Caesar's expression slightly eased, He'd gotten too agitated when White Feather had turned into Lin Yuan and pounced on him. It went beyond Caesar's bottom line, usually. No matter how noisy White Feather was, he wouldn't be angry. But when it turned into Lin Yuan, Caesar suddenly felt angry. Lin Yuan was special. He couldn't be replaced by illusions. He couldn't allow White Feather to become Lin Yuan and do such excessive actions. He respected Lin Yuan, so he hoped White Feather could also respect Lin Yuan. This was probably the reason, right? Caesar took a deep breath and suppressed his inexplicable rise of anger. Then he stretched out his hand and gently touched White Feather. This was only a symbolic soothing action. He couldn't really touch an illusion, but it made White Feather's mood instantly improve. Is Master showing favor to me? Great, Master really likes me. White Feather immediately flew up and arrogantly stopped on top of Caesar's head, Caesar. Looking at the guy jumping non-stop on his head, Caesar helplessly said, Okay, I'll tell you how I'll handle Suzaku. Caesar took out a necklace from his pocket. A diamond-shaped red crystal on a silver chain. The crystal shined under the light. It looked particularly delicate and beautiful. This was a gift Queen Anna had given him when he was little a crystal necklace that could be used as a space button. Caesar smiled and said, I put Suzaku in this space button. I'll present it to Lin Yuan as a gift, a gift. In other words, Suzaku will later be Lin Yuan's mech. He was the prince's mech. Suzaku was the prince consort's mech. If the two mechs flew together, they would look very harmonious. One white, one red, flying side by side, it would. Look very beautiful, a very good fit. White Feather was immersed in a beautiful and romantic fantasy, unable to come out. I told those people Suzaku crashed. I naturally can't give Suzaku directly to Lin Yuan. When I go back, I'll ask Brian for help to downgrade Suzaku's hardware so he can be temporarily transformed into a C class lookalike. Caesar paused. Next month is the annual MET competition. As long as you qualify for the national finals, you can directly earn a C-Class Mech Driver certificate. And this year's competition has C-Class Mechs as the first three prizes. Lin Yuan just has to get into the top three. And I can switch his Mech Reward with Suzaku this way. It won't arouse suspicion. White Feather excitedly said, This 
Approach is good, but master, are you sure he'll be able to get into the top three? Don't underestimate the mech competition. Experts are as common as the clouds in the nationals. Caesar gave White Feather a stop being foolish look and said, I think he can do it. His spiritual threshold match with Suzaku reached 100%. Obviously, he has an innate talent for mech operation. Caesar paused and looked back at the boy quietly sleeping on the bed. His expression gradually turned gentle. Even if he doesn't get into the top three, I'm here. I'll win the prize for him. Asterisk, 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 Caesar made White Feather fly directly over the military school. Precisely position itself over a large open space by the dormitory. Then shrunk after he passed the military defense network password verification, he directly landed one or two of the students who were training in the training ground. Unintentionally looked up and thought they saw a momentary illusion of a white feather suddenly. Dropping too. The rear of the dormitories, Caesar didn't want to attract attention, so he chose this time and place to quietly land. White Feather fell to the ground. And Caesar immediately jumped out from the cockpit holding Lin Yuan. He put away the mech, walked into the dormitory, and gently rested the boy on the bed in his bedroom. When Lin Yuan woke up, he found himself in his bedroom. The familiar environment collided with his still messy memory fragments. So he laid in a daze for a moment, his eyes gradually focused and he noticed the other person in the room. Caesar was sitting at his bedside, gently looking at him, up. Seeing Lin Yuan's confused look, Caesar couldn't help but smile. He got up, poured a cup of warm water and handed it over. Drink a little bit of water. You sweated too much. Oh, Lin Yuan took the cup and silently drank. After draining half the cup, he remembered reality and looked up at Caesar in surprise. How am I in the dormitory? Yeah, what the heck went on? Today, what's with that red mech? Lin Yuan said this and couldn't help but frown. His head was hurting him, and messy memories continuously slipped into his mind. Like a sharp knife cutting the nerves of his brain, the waves of pain assaulting his. Head made Lin Yuan clutch his head, his expression twisted. Caesar hurried forward, gently grasped Lin Yuan's arm and softly said, Don't think, calm down first. Dot 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 single quotes T think about it. Lin Yuan listened to Caesar's words and calmed down some, but he still felt initiated by his messy memories. Night Corps, General, Master, Omega, Inhibitor. What is this mess? And Daddy, where did these memories come from? Lin Yuan looked vacantly at Caesar. Caesar's saw the plea for help in his eyes and immediately patiently explained, Don't worry, today you met an S-class mech called Suzaku. It has a few decades worth of memory, so when you drove it and engaged in a spirit match, you exchanged memories, the strange memories in your mind came from. Its experiences over the past few decades, Lin Yuan felt a little peace of mind after hearing Caesar's explanation. Was it really memories from the mech? But those memories were too realistic. He could even feel Suzaku's joy, anger, loneliness, and pain. Those things obviously never happened to him. But he still felt empathy, as if he'd also experienced them. Owning another person's memory made Lin Yuan feel very strange. Like he'd sneaked into someone else's mind and peeked on their past. But it doesn't matter. It was just a really long dream. Although it would have been better if it was a dream of a wonderful experience. Anyway, it already happened. And he couldn't get surgery to wash the memories out. Right? Lin Yuan scratched his head, smiled and said, S-class mech are really powerful, her. Huh? He quickly accepted the fact that he was forcibly injected with memories and no longer dwelled on it. He said with an easy-going tone, It's hard to drive an S-class mech. I didn't know. What to do? Caesar looked at his pretending to be relaxed smile and couldn't help but feel some heartache. Fortunately, Lin Yuan's nature was cheerful optimism. If someone else was in his situation and strange memories were inexplicably poured, into their mind, even if they didn't have a mental breakdown, they would feel uncomfortable for a long time. They might even need a psychiatrist to treat them, 
and help them adjust their psyche. But Caesar was still relieved that Lin Yuan had quickly accepted reality and no longer seemed confused. Caesar hesitated for a moment, then he finally asked the question he really wanted to ask Lin Yuan. How did you open the door in the corridor today? Lin Yuan froze for a moment. In fact, he'd also found it very strange. The exit of the corridor was locked up, and he just curiously brushed his card on the door. His school ID card didn't budge it, but somehow. The card his mother had given him easily opened it up, Lin Yuan thought, then decided to tell Caesar. The door had a sensor to unlock it. I brushed my crystal card and went in. Caesar was silent for a moment. Can you show me your crystal card? Lin nodded. Took the crystal card out from his pocket and handed it to Caesar. It was a platinum crystal card printed with the Cepheus Galaxy Pentagonal insignia in pale silver, except for that. There was no other symbols. Caesar immediately froze in place. This was the dedicated card for the royal family, the highest authorized gold card granted by His Majesty Trent. It could even open the gates of the Lacey Imperial Palace. ABL Cadets, Chapter 0 to 5, Caesar Blushes in the Lacey Empire. Everyone was born with a card that was like a proof of identity. That card would automatically execute fingerprint identification. Directly binding with the owner's fingerprint, it not only acted as a proof of identity, it could also be used to manage bank deposits, act as a membership card for many establishments, a voucher for leasing, etc. It's a very convenient card when you travel around the empire, this lifelong identity card. Because it binds to the owner's fingerprint, even if it gets lost and picked up by others, they couldn't use it. It has one of the greatest security guarantees. Looking at the highest level gold card, a symbol of royal status, they always come. Caesar's mind was suddenly in chaos. Lin Yuan's card was exactly the same as his card. He could use this card, meaning, when he was born the card was identified and bounded to his fingerprints. In other words, when he was born, His Majesty Trent gave him the highest authority. This was obviously the royal family member's treatment. Ah, this guy, he can't buy my father's illegitimate child, right? Can there be such a melodramatic plot? This was simply another one of Brian's favorite melodramatic romance movies, but even more exaggerated. After a long emotional struggle, he admits to liking Lin Yuan just for Lin Yuan to be his half-brother. How laughable. Caesar looked at Lin Yuan. Who was in front of him? Seeing Caesar's somewhat strange expression, Lin Yuan scratched his head and asked, puzzled, there's something wrong with the card. Caesar coughed and said, no problem, you, you should rest early. Caesar turned away from Lin Yuan's bedroom. After Caesar left, Lin Yuan finally relaxed when Caesar was sitting by his bedside and looking at him with tenderness. He felt his blood flow speed up and his heartbeat go out of control again. Being enveloped by his warm alpha pheromone made even Lin Yuan feel an impulse to jump into his arms, really. His immune system must have failed again. Lin Yuan quickly got up, took out the box of medicine in the drawer and ate a piece. After taking the medicine, he felt a gaze on him from the side. Lin Yuan looked back and saw Hobby. Squatting in the corner, staring at his medicine bottle, anxiously drooling, Lin Yuan. Lin Yuan walked over and picked up Hobby, touched its ears, and asked, Hungry? Hobby immediately nodded enthusiastically. Lin Yuan smiled, took it down too. The dining room picked out its favorite cheese and fed it dinner. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. At the moment, Caesar was inside his bedroom using his light tablet to search for information with a serious expression. He used the highest authority account password, entering the Imperial Population Statistics Center, and easily found Lin Yuan's detailed family background information. Lin Yuan, 18 years old, male beta, born on December 24th, Cosmic Calendar 780. Planet Ren's father, Lin Wei Cheng, Imperial Army Soldier. Graduated from San Romeo Military Academy, Mech Control Department. After graduation, he entered the Night Corps as a vanguard soldier, very low-key, a few years later. The Night Corps had died and Ling Yu took over. 
he discovered Lin Wei Chang's hidden talent and promoted him to Vanguard Battalion Commander, and his rank was upgraded from Second Lieutenant to Colonel. Later on, Lin Yu had an accident and the Night Chorus was forced to disband. But Lin Wei Ching remained on the front line. During a tense battle, he drove his mech into the enemy camp and triggered a self-destruct device, destroying the federal enemy, a heroic sacrifice. Mother Wang Ru, a housewife with no background, stayed at home to take care of the children. The husband and wife were childhood friends. They had deep feelings for each other and had two children, Lin Yuan and a daughter called Lin Yao. Lin Yuan was four years old the year Lin Wei Cheng died. Mrs. Lin couldn't go out to work because of poor health, so they lived by virtue of the government's meager pension payout every month. She lived frugally, bearing her cross with her two children Lin Yao and Lin Yuan. Because of the hardships at home, Lin Yao went to work at 18, opening a cake. Shop in Planet Runs, Lin Yuan was a very clever child, first in his class since primary school. He took the military open enrollment test last year and was admitted to San Romeo Military Academy with 300 points, outstanding achievements, Caesar looked at the detailed information and slightly frowned. His initially chaotic thoughts gradually calmed down. Lin Yuan's family background looked very simple. His father sacrificed on the battlefield, his stay-at-home mother taking care of the children. Such a single-parent family was quite common in the successive years of the Empire's War, if not for the gold card. Caesar wouldn't doubt Lin Yuan's life experience after seeing such information. Lin Yuan was probably not the Lin Wei. Cheng husband and wife's child, he had the highest authority gold card issued by his father, so he must have a great connection to the palace. There were only two possibilities. One, he was his father's illegitimate son, since he was his father's not pure-blooded beta child, his father, in order to not to let his existence destroy the feelings between himself and the queen and the palace's order, secretly sent him away, giving him the highest authority gold card, letting him be raised by a family he trusted. This possibility had the smallest chance of being true, because both Lin Yuan and himself were 18 years old, born in the same year, according to the gossip among the palace servants. His mother's health was very poor during her pregnancy, so his father always stuck to her side. Caesar believed that his father, distressed by his pregnant wife's complications, wouldn't have the mood to cheat and give birth to a beta son outside the palace. So there was only the second possibility. His father gave this card to his very trusted subordinate. In his father's eyes, the child of that person was no different than even his biological children. In other words, Lin Yuan's biological parents' identity must be very complicated, and they were likely Trent His Majesty's highly trusted people because of the high esteem of his parents when Lin Yuan was born. His father directly gave this card to the boy as a gift. The reason why Lin Yuan was so smart and Excellent was definitely linked to his biological parents' power, remembering his father's sudden contact a few days ago, when he'd pretended to inadvertently mention Lin Yuan. Caesar was more affirmed of his conjecture. His father absolutely knew about Lin Yuan and the card's existence, and apparently, he also knew about Lin Yuan's life experience. Caesar no longer hesitated to take out his communicator and sent a video request to the Imperial. Palace, the communicator was quickly connected. The interior of the palace appeared on the projection screen. At the moment, the king and queen Anno were sitting on the sofa and his gloomy-faced royal brother was sitting next to them. Caesar's forehead immediately dripped with cold sweat. Why? Were these people gathered together today? It made him feel self-conscious to ask his father about Ling Yuan. Even more ridiculous, the palace's atmosphere was very tense. The situation seemed to be very bad. Trent His Majesty was looking at the gloomy-faced big prince. He snapped, Sylvan, don't push my patience. You need to hold a wedding before the end of this year. Sylvan resolutely said, I'm a man. Why should I be given away in marriage? If I can take a prince consort, I have no 
opinion at all, but it's impossible to force me to be married away. Queen Anna rubbed her temples to ease her headache and said in a gently tone, Sylvan, you're an Omega. How can you take a prince consort? Sylvan raised his eyebrows, not convinced. What about Omega? Omega must be given away in marriage. Both my younger sisters are already married. Could it be that the palace cannot support one prince? So you have to send me away to be a broodmare for a lifetime, here. The ignored communication device lit up, and Sylvan finally noticed Caesar on the projection screen. He immediately walked over as if finding a savior. Caesar, quickly say a few words for your brother. Hurry up, Caesar. After a long silence, Caesar suppressed a smile and said, Wang Zhang, you're already 24 years old. Isn't it better to choose an alpha for marriage early? There are so many alpha, you can't pick one you like. Do you want to use inhibitors for a lifetime? No one can fight. Against nature, of course, under Sylvan's cold, knife-sharp eyes, Caesar wouldn't dare say this sentence. Sylvan blankly glanced at his younger brother, then directly turned off the communicator. Caesar scratched his nose and sat back at his desk. His Wang Zhang's temper has always been irritable, advocating the use of force since childhood, married to fighting. The royal guard looked at the bigger prince as if seeing the devil. Longing to shrink themselves down and hide in the ground, Brian was right. For an Omega, the big prince was too violent. Such a violent Omega, no one would dare marry him. He was also picky, his gaze very high, looking at those alpha with complete dislike. Since he turned 18, he has been injecting inhibitors now. He was 24 years old and didn't want to get married, and his father and mother had no way to handle him. After 10 minutes, Trent His Majesty finally quelled the palace's family war and sent the insensitive Sylvan away. For self-reflection, after the big prince returned to his own palace, the king took the initiative to send over a communication request. Caesar immediately connected and respectfully greeted. Father Trent asked, Caesar, why were you looking for me? Caesar quickly said, I wanted to report to you about the situation at the military museum today. Trent nodded, right? I already know about the museum. You handled it well, but is Suzaku really as you said? Did he crash into the canyon? Caesar replied, no, Trent. Smiled and said, very good. It's a good habit to tell the truth to your father. What's going on with the mech debris at the bottom of the canyon then? Caesar explained, I found a pile of red mech parts in white feather storage and threw them too. The bottom of the canyon among the boulders. It's disguised as Suzaku's crash site to avoid suspicion. Trent frowned. What is your reasoning for such an action? Caesar said, having Suzaku locked up in the museum is not the best way to deal with. Him, Suzaku's former owner is dead. The mech doesn't need to be implicated and kept in captivity. Suzaku was the Empire's best S-class mech. It wants to recognize a new master and I think there's no problem with that. So it should not only be released, it should be allowed to play a greater role outside. Ray recognized a master, Trent's brow tightly wrinkled. Suzaku said he wanted to recognize a new master. He chose Lin Yuan. Lin Yuan accidentally entered Suzaku's cockpit today, and his spirit fused with Suzaku. Incredibly, the matching degree reached 100% and Suzaku recognized him. Lin Yuan, Trent mused in silence for a moment, then said, The Empire's control of S-Class mech is very strict. An ordinary student is not qualified to have an S-Class mech. You want to transfer Suzaku to Lin Yuan. Do you have a plan? I thought of it, Caesar seriously said. The prize for the first three winners in the mech competition is a C-Class mech I intend to use. The one month until the competition to convert Suzaku into a C-Class mech, then secretly switch the prize. We can deceive everyone. And after Suzaku becomes a temporary C-Class mech, no one will suspect. Trent smiled and said, deceive everyone that Suzaku has crashed while disguising it as a C-Class mech and switching it with Lin Yuan's prize. If anything goes wrong in the middle, you'll have to eat the consequences. 
If the military found out that you released Suzaku privately, even your father cannot protect you. Trent stood up and stared deeply at his youngest son, Caesar. Is Lin Yuan important to you? Do you have to take such a big risk for him? Caesar was stunned for a moment. For some reason, his face wanted to heat up at his father's question. Caesar quickly explained, Lin Yuan is my very good friend. He's also very talented at mech control. Even rarer, he and Suzaku had a spirit match of 100%. I think leaving Suzaku to him will have the best outcome. Trent looked at his son for a moment, then smiled and asked, You don't doubt Lin Yuan's identity, Caesar. I have been monitoring Lin Yuan's crystal card. He used his card to open the top door of the museum today. You realize that, right? He has exactly the same card as you. Don't you want to ask me questions? Like if he's your half-brother, Trent said this. But his suggestion unexpectedly eliminated all of Caesar's suspicions. Caesar looked up at him and said, Father, I believe you wouldn't betray. Mother, but I'm very curious. Who exactly are Lin Yuan's biological parents? Who is worthy of such high value? Trent lightly said, It's enough for you to know that I value that child. Since you believe in your father, just continue to believe. I will tell you everything when the time is ripe. The communication was cut off, and Caesar had no choice but to turn off the communicator. Since his father said so, he couldn't cross-examine further. Perhaps Lin Yuan's identity is very confidential. When the time is ripe, what is father's plan? What is he waiting for? Although Caesar was the prince, after all, he was only 18 years old. And he has never participated in the imperial government, if Lin Yuan's life experience really involved too many confidential secrets, and his father refused to tell him, Caesar could only temporarily depress the doubts in the bottom of his heart. A hasty pursuit of truth might interfere with his father's plans, feeling his stomach grumble in hunger. Caesar walked back to the dining room to look for something to eat and suddenly entered into a heartwarming scene. Lin Yuan was holding Hobby in his arms, patiently feeding it. Hobby obediently laid in his arms, happily eating cheese. Lin Yuan's face also had a clear smile. Holding the pet and smiling, the outline of the teenager's face seemed inexplicably soft, his clear black eyes matching the eyes of the guy in his arms. Like a pair of beautiful black gems, his slightly bent lips revealed a sunny smile, and his pajamas gave him a relaxed and comfy look, his whole person exuding a lazy atmosphere. The 18-year-old boy's unique tender and sexy temperament was vividly on display at the moment. Caesar heard the sound of his heart rapidly. Pounding, he even felt that if the hobby Lin Yuan was holding was replaced with a baby, there would be no sense of violation. Lin Yuan was holding a child and feeding it. Just imagining it felt very warm and happy. Of course, it's better if that child was born from him. If it could look like Lin Yuan, a rounder and shorter version of Lin Yuan, it would be super cute. Wait a minute, Caesar you beast. What the hell are you thinking? Caesar, Lin Yuan looked up and saw his suddenly appeared. In the room, standing stiffly like a statue as if struck by a lightning, roommate, and asked with some puzzlement, what's wrong? Hobby also immediately raised his head and looked up at Caesar. Puzzled, as if to ask, Prince, His Royal Highness, what's the matter? Under Lin Yuan and Hobby's black and clear eyes, Caesar's face suddenly burst with heat and he quickly avoided Lin Yuan and the pet's sight. Pretending to calmly say, I'm just hungry, I came out to find something to eat. He walked stiffly to the fridge and took out a box of cookies. Then he turned stiffly and walked back to his bedroom, closing the door, Lin Yuan. Hobby, looking at the direction of the disappearing Caesar, Lin Yuan thought with some, Puzzlement, does he have a leg crampa? Why did he walk so awkwardly and stiffly, as if trying to keep his body in a straight line? Ah, Hobby excitedly thought, His Majesty the Prince blushed. His Majesty the Prince was blushing. 
equals 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 t then Sylvan, Big Prince's name is Shi Wei, which doesn't really have a common English equivalent I can find, the closest. But that's a girl's name, so Sylvan it is, given away in. Marriage Jiaren, to get married from the women's perspective. Their argument is weird to translate, basically, Sylvan doesn't want to be married off to another family how women usually are. But he wouldn't mind marrying someone into his. Family, what men usually do. Wang Zhang, royal older brother, hold your horses, they're Caesar. Kids come later.